Welcome to This Organized Life. If you're a mom, wife, or coffee lover seeking advice on how to reduce clutter and reclaim time, look no further than your host, Lori Palau, founder of Simply Be Organized and author of Hot Mess, A Practical Guide to Getting Organized. For a lot of people, clutter is their dirty little secret, but it doesn't have to be. Each week, we will share practical tips, chat with experts, and provide strategies on how to keep you organized. I hope that by sharing our stories, you feel a little less alone and more empowered to tackle the areas that are holding you back. So let's get started. Hi, everybody, and welcome to this special edition of this Organized Life podcast. i um, Lori Palau, and... I am here, before we get into our big episode today, I invited Gail to pop over into the studio to talk about our retreat. Now, I'm just putting a preface out there. If anybody's watching on YouTube, this is this organized life right here. So I just, I had a night last night. It wasn't like anything fun. I was up all night with a dog. Yep. So, um, in the back. yeah, he's having a, he's, this is senility setting in for my dog. Um, and I asked Gail if she could stop by before the day got started. So I have yet to get ready. So if you guys are watching on YouTube, this is what it really looks like behind the scenes people. Um, but in any event, um, we just got back. Um, if you follow us on the socials, you probably have seen, some pictures and comments about our partner retreat. And if you follow any of our professional organizers in our group, they've been posting pictures too. And so I want to just take a, a few minutes to talk a little bit about it because it was amazing. I want to just talk about it what really it was. Yeah. I want to talk about what it is, who it's for, why we do it, all the things. And since Gail, um, if you guys are new to our show. Gail's one of my ride or dies. We've been friends for over 20 years. And in addition to her day job, she works with me to help do event planning and other assorted related things right. to, to simply be organized on the podcast. Um, welcome. Thank you. Good to see you. Good to, good to see you too. Nice. I know <laughs> it's, it's been a minute. Um, so just really quickly, we, for those of you who might not be familiar, five years ago, decided that we wanted to kind of expand our reach because our goal is to have as many people um, not live with clutter and live an organized life. And we know that we can't be everywhere to all the people. So we created this community of professional organizers called the SPO Partner Program, where we've got professional organizers in multiple cities, and they all are independently owned, women-owned businesses. Um, they have their own style, their own methodology, but we do um, webinars, business training, best practices, all the things to help give them the tools to run successful businesses. Right, right. Because sometimes, well, a lot of times you can, you're great at what you do, but you need a little coaching and help and the business end of it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. so um, over the years, our business has, uh, or our partner program has grown. We now have, give or take, like 30 women mm -hmm. in it. Um, and every year for the past, well. Well, we had a couple years of. Well, we have one year we had a miss because of COVID, but in 2019, because right. we come together every right. month um, on Zoom and not everyone can always make it because life is busy. Yeah. Um, but we, the partners actually were the ones that suggested it is they said, you know, we would love, we, we connect up with these other women through computers, you know, and on yeah. the phone, Yeah. but we would love some in-person connection. Yeah. And so we were like, well, we love a party and right. we love it. <laughs> <laughs> so we decided, Hey, let's do a retreat. And so 2019 was our first one. We went to yeah. Nashville. It was our inaugural event and everyone loved it. it great, yeah. um, at that time, it was just three days. It was like Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And people were like, this is great. We want more. So yeah. we extended it a day and made it a Thursday to Sunday. Um, and then COVID hit. So we had to put a pin in our 2020 mm -hmm. event. Then we resumed last year. We went to Austin, yeah, which was awesome. Yeah, it was great. And this year we just returned back from Scottsdale, Arizona which was incredible. Mm 
Um, but we wanted to just talk about it. I said to Gail, come on, because I think there's so much value that our listeners can get to really understand yeah. what the retreat is all about um, and kind of like how it's different from other summits and conferences and things because it's got a completely different spin don't you think oh I think so yeah I think even though you, you know they're getting content and um about this year it was great because it was finance it was a lawyer and all that but I just think I've said this three years that we've done it is that I I don't think you can um put a price or a or just a value on everybody being together mm -hmm. because as much as content as you give them and everybody else, I also think they get it just, just collaborating together. Oh, absolutely. I've said that for three years. I, I, I just think that is, there's such a value in that. Yeah, no, absolutely. There's such a value. And, and one of the things that we wanted to do, and, and I was, this was definitely by intentional design is most of these women, not all of them are moms, but no. all of them are busy women entrepreneurs. Right. They're right. busy. We're all busy, busy, right? So everyone is, and we're always being forced to make decisions, whether right. it's decisions at home, decisions in our work, decisions in our relationships, whatever it is. And so I said, I wanted to create a place where they could just literally be almost like an all-inclusive, mm -hmm. you know, right. it's a one-stop shop. Like you yes. get yourself there because everyone's coming from different directions. So you figure planes, trains, automobiles, what you need to yes. get there. But once you're there, everything is decided for you. Right. We've planned your meals. We've planned your activities. We've planned your lodging. Like everything is planned and paid for. Right. So like, just show up. And then if you exactly. want to do other stuff on your own, you, you can. do have free time, but, but, and which you should have free time, but yeah, everything else is just planned. And, and I can't tell you how many times, like Kate Bosch kept saying to me, thank you for planning. I don't have to make a decision. Right. Yeah, yeah exactly. I think they all just enjoyed it. It was. Yeah. Because, because people, and, and we're able to really, and because we keep it small, Right. So we've got 30 plus right. people in the group, but we don't open it up for 30 people because we want it to be more intimate and manageable. Yes. Yeah. So and to and give getting your personal time. They get a lot of your personal time too. They can ask questions, whether it's in the meeting room or just at dinner. Yes. They have you like the whole time. Yeah. So it's nice when it's small like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So so we, we they see in the bathroom. That's true too. Exactly. Like, hey. Or at the hotel bar. <laughs> or at the hotel, hotel bar, bar after after our activity day is done. Right. Um, but yeah, it's been really great. And to watch the growth from all of the partners. Yes. And have them set goals of things that they're gonna do. Like I remember Martha Carroll last year's retreat mm -hmm. was like, I I I want to finish my book. I'm writing a book on uh, which again we'll have her on when it all comes right. to fruition but she was like i'm gonna write the book and then this year in our session about goals she's like i finished writing my book yeah, yeah. so i mean it's a, it's great to see all the different people's wins right and so it's you, almost like though too when like when she said that it's you know it's one big family and when one of your children or i don't know it's yes. children but one of your people like children and they just get that goal you're so happy everybody and everybody feels that yeah in the group like everybody feels so happy and so proud and and excited for them exactly which it, is is great that all these women just cheer each other on and and cheer each other on in a three-dimensional way mm -hmm. and again not slamming social media not slamming like no. friendships that cultivate through instagram or Facebook or wherever, but there is no replacement for that personal no. one on one mm -hmm. sitting face down with someone yeah. face to face, talking right, really authentically. Yeah. And that and now they're like some of them are that they just met what three years ago or whatever. Yeah. And then we have some rooming together. They room together. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which yeah, I mean, 
Yeah. They're... How much more personal yeah. can you get? Exactly. Which exactly. is, I think, You're it's fantastic the because they're becoming friends. Yes. Independent yeah. from. Indep- yeah. Exactly. Which is great. And so we're telling you all of this because for a couple of reasons. So if you're, if you're not an entrepreneur and you're listening to our show because you want organizing tips and strategy, that's great. Totally fine. It's about the power of in-person community. Mm -hmm. And it's something that I think is so important. It's like one of my core values and I cannot stress it enough. Having that actual, like those people and sometimes pushing it yourself outside your comfort zone. Mm-hmm. Um, we got right. everyone on a horse. Oh, wait, yeah. Wait, you have to tell them a little bit. So one of our activities we do every year, so we do a team building activity. Yes. And this year we went horseback riding and did a sunset, a sunset horse. shout out to McDonald ranch. Yes. Shout out McDonald ranch in Scottsdale, Arizona. Mm-hmm. Amazing, amazing experience. It really was. It really was. It was just beautiful. The scenery was beautiful. They were so helpful and fun. They were fun, and um, I was still sore after you, after horseback riding. After horseback riding because it's been a while. But yeah. just what a I can't even. Yeah, Kimberly, we'll make sure we put all the pictures from, or we don't do all. There was a big photo dump. But no, we'll but I have pictures. some that I have to send you too, Kimberly. We'll, we'll put them in the Facebook group this yeah. was the podcast it was and, just and also oh, on insta yeah it was great I and mean, again not everybody people wanted to go outside their comfort zones or mm-hmm. they were a little nervous but they did it they any, did it and everyone yeah. was so happy yeah and it just those are the life experiences and we talk about like doing things with experiences that they're going to remember right you know oh absolutely and and it, again, it's hard to put a price tag on that because they will remember yeah. that experience right forever. I know, and and for us, we have to top that every year. So I know we're gonna like, be so it. hard. We're like, we're I'm already so like hard. next year. Yeah. So we've already begun planning for next year. So anyway, so for people that aren't in the business, just take this as whether right. you're getting a group of girlfriends together and going somewhere, right. or just reaching out. Like doing that recharge for yourself. And yes, you come back and this week I've been playing catch up with everything because you were right. out of the office for yeah. a few days. But it really, it's it's so, so worth important. it. It's, it's so really important. important. You really need that recharge. You really do. And for people that are in the business, mm-hmm. this is amazing. Like, again, I'm biased to our community because yeah. they're ours. They're our people. Right. But we're really, it's a special group of women. And if you're somebody out there that is either currently a professional organizer or you are thinking about becoming, you're like, I really have a passion for organizing. Mm -hmm. I'm just not sure how to like execute the business side of things. We would love to chat with you. We would absolutely love to chat with you um, because we're all about slow and steady growth. We don't want, and we have people that also outgrow the partner program too. And that's mm-hmm. okay. That's okay. Right. You know, and that's the other thing is, you know, people go through, they get to a point where they feel like they've reached a point where they're either going to pivot their business or they want to kind of like fly solo. Mm-hmm. And we're like, that's fine. That's, we want to yeah. support and continue to right. encourage. And that breeds a cycle for new people to come in. Right. Right. Yeah. So we're going to um, link up to information of how to connect up with us, learn more, obviously go to our website, simplybeorganized.com, work with me. There's an SBO partner tab in there. Mentoring talks all about the different things that we do. But again, um, it was just amazing. It really was. It really was. And I, again, I say after the three, you know, three years that we've done this, just seeing like, all the relationships that, yeah, all the friendships that um, were created through it. Everyone loves Gail. No, well, no, loves no, no. Gail. I'm like everybody's mom because I'm the oldest one. So I'm everybody's mom. Gosh. I take care of everybody. But wow. um, I just love, I just love it. I love seeing everybody again. It's like going home, you know, it's like, it's a reunion. It's a reunion, it's like a reunion every year. And I just, again, I can't say enough how much I love all these women and just the friendships that have developed. 
Yeah. I, I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. And um, it's a lot of work. It really is. We do a lot of planning mm -hmm. behind the scenes um, throughout the year. We've already begun. Right. Starting to plan for next year. And we're going to take everybody? a road trip. We're, oh yeah. We're, we're going to do a, a little visit. site visit. Where you want to tell everybody where we're going? Yeah. Go, go, go oh, for it. It's mine. I can do it. You get to do it's it. Charleston, South Carolina. Woo, woo. So for yes. all my real house or real house, all my Bravo fans. Right. Southern charm people. Right. So the, <laughs> we're going. I, I We're going. Yep. And so very excited to go to Charleston. Mm -hmm. I've been there before. Most of the other yeah. places that we went. Um, that was you know, our first time. Yeah. But Charleston been there before. Yeah. Love it. It's great, it's great. Great little town. And um, if you're interested in learning more about our retreat, any of the things that we're doing here, again, contact us. We'll have all the links in our show notes. And we are back today with another one of our partner spotlight episodes. And if you're new to our show, um, our partner spotlight episodes are when we feature some of the other professional organizers who are in our SBO partner community. And our SBO partner community is our network where we have over 30 independently owned professional organizers from all over the globe that run their own organizing companies. Some of them specialize with um, people who are downsizing. Some people specialize in move management. Some people are specialists. Some people specialize with, you know, people with young families, but they all help others live a more organized life. And we love that. And so they're part of our community and we like to shed light and showcase them. Um, we also, if you're on our website, we've got a list um, by state and city of all of our organizers. So if you need an organizer in your neck of the woods, or you have a friend, sister, mother, cousin who lives in a certain state and is maybe looking for some organizing help and not sure where to go, please like hit us up. We've got this really deep network of very talented, passionate people. And so again, I love to be able to use my platform to talk to them, get inspiration from them and just share them with you so that you get to know them a little bit better. <clears throat> so join me today is my friend, Lee Genkiner. And Lee lives actually not that far from me in New Jersey, down near the Jersey shore at the beach. Um, and she's a mom of three kids, school age. So like, I think like middles, I'm not sure, not super littles, not bigs. So she's like in the weeds with all the things, carpooling and whatnot. Um, but she has an incredible organizing business. And I really encourage you guys to check out her Instagram page. It's called orderly L E I G H get it orderly home. Um, she is like total goals when it comes to organizing spaces. Her brand is on point. And I know that there's a spectrum of like what organizing looks like to people. But if you have that conjured Pinterest image of organization, that's Lee, that's Lee's page and all the work that she does. Um, and, and she's just built this, this company from the ground up and just, I'm continue to be inspired. Um, by her every day. And so I said, we have to get you on the show. And she's been so busy. It took us all the way to November to make it happen, but here we are. Um, so without further ado, let me welcome my friend Lee from Orderly Home to the show. Welcome, Lee. Thank you so much. What a lovely introduction. Thank you for having me. Oh my gosh. And Lee is one of those people so like, if everyone knows me, I'm like, oh, who do I want to like sit and have a drink with and hang out with? And Lee is absolutely, I mean, I love all of our partners, but I just like that. I just love her and she's awesome. And so I'm so glad that we finally were able to make this work from a scheduling standpoint to get you on because you were Thank very you so busy. Much. Well, we're both very busy. So I'm glad we were able to make it happen. I left a client, come back here, go back, you know, juggling oh. all the things, balls in the air. So, so I gave a very top line overview, but just in your own words, tell our listeners a little bit about you and even kind of go back to your, your backstory before you even started your business, because, you know, this is a, a newer venture in the grand scheme of things compared to your professional life beforehand. So maybe just kind of walk us through that. Sure. So, you know, I was, I had a prior, like a corporate career before this. I worked in corporate merchandising. I always like to say in fashion. 
Um, and I did that for very for many years, uh, for almost 15, 16 years. And um, corporate downsizing had different plans for me. And I was living, you know, in Hoboken and working in the city as with my husband. And we kind of decided to take a shift to move to the suburbs. And coincidentally, I lost my job. The timing was almost in sync. And I kind of thought, well, this is your blessing. I've always kind of wanted to have been home with my kids. Anyways, at this point, my son was a year and a half, my youngest. And I was like, I could be the mom. I could be a mom. And I always wanted to do this. And I was working 12 hours a day, day every day. And I wasn't really seeing that. And so I looked, took it as a blessing. And I quickly learned that I wasn't the best at playing trains and blocks on the floor with my son all day long. I enjoyed it and that was awesome. But and kudos to moms who can do that 24 seven. But for me, I just found like I needed something a little bit more than that for me. Um, and I feel like I'm a better mom when I take some time out of the house to do things for myself. Um, and I always used to say that in my prior career, we worked so, 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 so hard, but the fruits of our labor, we really couldn't feel the effects that we were having on people. And I always was super organized. And I, you know, it was right at the kind of the beginning of when professional home organizers started to be recognized. Uh, I followed the home edit for a long time. I actually went to high school with one of the founding partners. So I'd always been kind of watching and I, I always thought I could do that. Uh, a friend of mine encouraged me. She said, you know, what do you have to lose? sort of thing. It doesn't cost a lot to start this kind of business. Like, and she kind of nudged me. She had a big pantry and she said, you could just do mine, you know, like I'll buy the products, but you can, like, you do it for free and you can, I'm having a party and everybody can come over and see what an amazing job you did. You did. And so I thought I might as well give it a whirl. And my husband had a friend whose wife was also starting her own business um, in Northern Jersey. And I saw her stuff and I was like, oh, wow, she's making money doing this. I think I can do it too. And so that's when Orderly Home was born. I just, it was like literally January 1st. It was kind of like a New Year's resolution. I wanted to do it right though. I come from a brand uh, background. So I really waited until, you know, I had a logo and a website and, you know, I wanted to look super professional. Um, and then it really just took one person on the recommendations page in our on Facebook. I'll never forget her. She um, was looking for a professional organizer and I put in, she had comments this long about with all these different people. And I responded and I said, hey, listen, I just started. I'm brand new, but like, uh, give me a shot sort of thing. She probably went with me because I was so inexpensive in comparison to everybody else. Um, and she referred me to everybody she ever knew. And I just, that's how it grew to be this pretty big business um, locally. Yeah, because you have, and I love that. And I want to come, I want to hit on a couple of different points that you said, yeah. um, but you have a team now, like it's not yeah. even just you. I mean, and so you have a, a team of people that, that work with you. So it really has grown in scale, not just in the amount of clients you have, but just the ability to serve people with, you know, multiple people. So yeah, we do. We have um, almost, I have about eight there. Everybody's part-time for the most part, you know, we work w during the pockets of our lives when our children are at school, not me because I'm running the business, but my team members are all moms who, you know, we work, they work eight to three and, you know, so, but it's amazing because it allows us to, um, service our clients closer to their needs, um, as opposed to booking out months in advance, we can run multiple teams on the same day and, you know, and try to, you know, keep the business growing and moving. But yes, I mean, it went from me doing every single thing by myself to this, you know, big, this big, well, bigger team, I guess. It, I should it, say. it is. <laughs> and I love it. And it's funny because we had, um, Angela O'Brien on last month for our partner spotlight episode. And when we were talking about kind of her origin story, because again, I'd like to say, you know, we've got two different sets of listeners here. We've got people that are just coming to us because they want organizing tips, strategies, help. We love that, right? Of course, it's like a no brainer. But then we also have this other community of people who are maybe in a transition in their life and they're either looking to start something or maybe they want to 
test the waters or they are passionate about organizing and want to know how can I do this? So I want to, I love using this partner spotlight, not just to showcase our amazing partners, but also to like give social proof that like you too can do this if you're listening out there. And there's not one right way to do something. And Angela was saying how she was just doing like getting business and was probably doing it like six months before she even had a website kind of thing. And you, I was more like you where I, you know, I wanted my website. I wanted all the kind of I's dotted, T's crossed. But I think the beauty of it is you can, it, it is a very attainable if you are good at this and you are dedicated and willing to make it work. Like it's a, it's an easier, I'm air quoting, job to start because it doesn't require a lot of overhead. You can test the waters. You can start to see, do I like organizing for other people? Do, what are the types of clients I like to serve? You know, like I learned early on, I don't like helping people with move jobs. Like I would much rather help somebody in their space where they are, you know? So you learn these things just through trial and error. And so, um, I think it's, I think it's inspiring to just see what you've done and how you've kind of really elevated? Well, I think too, my corp, my career was in merchandising. So it lends itself so much to our style and how, you know, we're differentiated from other organizers. Um, you know, we, we focus on function as well as design, obviously function first and foremost, but it's really design driven. We want it to look very beautiful and be a space that you're very proud of. Just like you would walk in and show somebody your brand new living room and, you know, the throw pillows that are coordinated with the rug, with the lighting, with the artwork, with the wallpaper, with all of that. We want our spaces to feel that elevated. And so that's definitely, you know, from my merchandising background really lends itself to the style in which we organize. Um, but I will say, I just want to touch on like, um, you know, starting the business, this business is definitely not for the faint of heart. And, no. you know, something that I learned quickly that it's, yes, it's so we're good at it intuitively, you know, we're good at creating order and calm and all of that sort of stuff. But, um, you know, there is a lot of work that goes into it and it is, you know, it is not, you know, something that just like you know, just show up with baskets and make it look perfect. You know, there's definitely a huge process that goes along with it. It's also managing relationships with people, people who have relationships with their stuff. You know, there's a lot that goes into this. And then it's not just that. It's, you know, the administrative part of running a business is, you know, again, where I had that business acumen from my prior career, it really allowed me to manage this business in a way that makes a lot of sense. Um, but like I said, it's not, you know, definitely not just baskets and labels and, you know, Instagram. I've, and I'm glad that you said that too. Right. And I don't, I didn't mean to for anybody out there. No, no. And I appreciate yeah. you, you calling that out because in the one hand, again, when you look at jobs that you could start without a lot of overall investment, this is a great type of job. You don't have to necessarily go to school for it and things like that. Right. But by the same token, there is a lot that goes on behind the scenes. And I, I've told this story before on the show, but um, this was years ago and we were starting to scale our team and, and bring on some assistance. And there was a woman who approached me who I didn't know because most of our most of the people were people that I knew that came either through referrals or people that I had personal experience with. But this woman had come to me and said, you know, I follow you on social media or whatever. And I would love to, to work with you and, you know, interviewed her and, and all the, everything seemed great. And she was, she worked like two days on a job and was like exhausted and was like, I really just want to sit here and make labels all day. Like, and I wasn't, and it wasn't a bad thing. I was just like, well, that's not what we're doing. Like, that's the icing on the cake. That's the fun part. But we got to be schlepping the bins and going through and sitting on the floor and sorting a bunch of stuff and all that non glamour stuff that we don't always post because that's not what people necessarily want to see. But there's right. a, it, there's a, that large part of the process um, that is not glamorous. And, you know, and so just being aware of that, I think is really, you know, important going into that. 100%. Yeah. Um, 
So talk, and, and I, this was another thing that you said that I just kind of want to elaborate on is you have a very specific style and it is very aesthetically, it is function for sure. Cause that's like you said, the foundational piece for everything, but there is an element of product that is very tied to your brand of bringing that in. And I think that that's a very important distinction because there are people who really want a, just a decluttering editing expert. They want somebody to just sit there and help them go through the papers or the, whatever they've accumulated the stuff over the years, but product might not be their priority. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important because I would assume but correct me if I'm wrong, that that is not the ideal client for you because part of the, part of the why people hire you is not just because you're going to streamline and simplify their life, but you're also going to put this style with it. I agree. Yeah. And I, I mean, I haven't really had many people that, you know, reach out to me and that's not what they're looking for. You know, what we, what we offer, um, and I think that comes through, you know, at the proposal process or even sure. when we're just discussing because in many cases, product can be half the cost of the whole proposal. And that's, you know, that's not, you know, a small investment in some cases, you know, if we're doing one space, it could be, but, um, you know, not everybody wants baskets, you know, in every single closet in their house. And so, yeah, for sure. And that's really, I think we learn that quickly from each other, um, if we're not the right match sort of thing. If somebody's not looking for that, they're probably not even looking, reaching out to me, to be honest, um, from that standpoint, or they just don't want to spend the money on that sort of stuff. And I haven't had to have that conversation really with anybody, but if somebody, you know, were to say, listen, like, this is what I want. I don't even feel comfortable. It's not for me. It's just not my, what I would feel is the best reflection of my work. Cool. Um, I'm happy to reuse people's products that they already own and all of that stuff to be more budget friendly. But um, really, you know, I want it to be a reflection of me as well. And so, yeah, it's probably not, we're probably not the best match. Um, but for the most part, people who reach out to us and that's what they're looking for is, right. is that design element too. So I don't know if you're like me, but uh, my home has been, and my family have been the guinea pigs for years on things that I now implement with my clients um, or things that I teach or write about now, um, whether it's products that I use that I brought into my own home to see if I like them and how they, how I can use them and function or just the systems and strategies for creating drop spots and zones and meal planning or whatever the thing is. And I'm wondering as a busy working mom of three kids, kind of how, you know, how you guys function in your home, home behind closed doors. Yeah. I mean, listen, every closet doesn't look like every client's closet. That's for sure. But I mean, there's the systems are all in place, but the reality is, is that I have three kids and husband who are not crazy like I am. So <laughs> <laughs> there's a delicate balance. There's a few things that I do, like just in general, I actually did a piece on how to stay organized for back to school. And I think it like lends itself just in general. Number one, a family calendar, like that is critical because it's not just about like the stuff that you own. Um, I know you talk a lot about all the different types of organizing and I'm not an expert on all of them, but for me, just like I have three kids, they all are involved in a million different sports and activities. Um, I have a husband who luckily is working from home now and so is able to help, but no, everybody can know where everybody has to be because we have one shared family calendar. We have the skylight calendar, but I was going to say, I was going to say, what do you use? Cause I think people like to know. Yeah. Um, and there's again, not a one size fits all, but we also have a yeah. family chicken. So, so you yeah. use. We use the Skylight calendar. It's on my website under products that we love. So you can always like look at it there, but um, it syncs with Google and iCalendar and Outlook and all of that stuff. Um, every person has their own color and every, every carpool that we have is on there. Uh, anytime Tommy and I are going out for dinner, anything that like is happening that's scheduled is on that. So I think first and foremost, like just staying organized 
in our brains and knowing where everybody has to be at one time is critical. So that's in my kitchen. It's right on my island. Everybody can see it. If somebody asks me what they have, I'm like, did you look at the calendar? And they can go and look at it. And Skylight's even gone as far as us adding like chores and things like that, chore lists that you can assign by person. And I'm, if anybody- so, I'm not familiar yeah. with them. I'm, I mean, I don't know it's, if that's- It's like- um. Is it remember an, when they used to do like the digital frames? Yeah, like is that pictures. I was gonna say, is that what it okay? Yeah, yeah, so they sell it with the pictures too, but I just got the calendar and okay. it's just like a something that it's like sits on your on your countertop. So does it so you said it sinks, but do you have like an app? So if you're app, out and about, yeah. so you have an yeah. app that yeah. oh I, but love I don't that. really use it through the app. Like uh, okay. if I have to add something for my family, I add it on Google. If I have to, I don't like, I don't put my work stuff on there. Well, I was then, just going to ask, like, do you do your work? But like, if you're at a, but you put like the kids' doctor's appointments on there. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Okay. Yeah. And like, I put who's driving to who that was that like would that kind of segues into like lean on other people is the best mm. way to all obviously stay, stay organized. You know, I'm not the mom that's raising my hand to drive there and back every single night. It's just <laughs> physically impossible. So I do, you know, lean on my friends and, you know, teammates, parents and things like that. So maybe I, if my son has soccer two nights a week, I'm only driving one way. Same thing with my daughter does gymnastics four days a week and it's, you know, 25 minutes away. So like who's driving there and who's driving back. And we, I like, we share the load. And then that way, you know, it's on the calendar. It's very clear who's doing what so that we're not all out of the house. All like, I don't have to put my son in the car to drive to and from a million different places when my husband is out. So leaning on others, I think is super key to staying organized as a family. And then the other thing I was going to say is like, minimize what comes into your house and stays in your house. So like, yes, my kids are seven, between seven and 12, almost 13. But when they come home from school, like there is an edit that happens the minute they walk in the door, especially my little guy. I open up his folder. If there's, there's usually nothing that I want to keep unless it's Father's <laughs> Day or Mother's Day. I love or they it. Wrote something funny or they drew something inappropriate that we think we're going to laugh about in, you know, 30 years. But other than that, it's in the garbage immediately. That's it. Like, I don't need to hold on to it. There's paperwork that they need to go through or I have a form I have to fill out. It goes into his little, I have like a file bin on my counter in my kitchen and it goes into my Cooper bin. And then I pull it out at the end of the day and I fill up the form and I put it back in his folder. Again, it's just like, same thing with mail. The mail comes in the door, we open it up. Junk mail goes straight into the garbage. Bills go to my husband's desk. Like it's just, we minimize that sort of clutter because for me, clutter and things coming in and out and like staying on my countertop, that makes me crazy. And that makes me feel disorganized. So I just edit that stuff as I go. And yes, I'm not heartless. I do keep stuff that my kids like, Cause made. you know, cause yeah. I'm like you, but you yeah. know that there are people out there yeah. that are twitching right now yeah. going, oh yeah. my gosh, her kids so are going to be in therapy. Those people have stacks are like literally worksheets that have math problems on them this yeah. high. And so how I do it is listen, I keep that kind of stuff. I put it on the side. I put it in a two file bin. And then my kids have keepsake bins that I keep by ear and I keep stuff that's very special. And if you have children who get upset about that, what I always encourage people to do is just say, hey, listen, I know that you think this is super special, but I want to show you what I think is special. And I pull out my memory, their memory bins, and I let them go through their memory bins. And then they see, oh, wow, these things are so special. I have you know, there's school pictures in there. I have notes that I've gotten from teachers. I have their handprints and their thumbprints from when they were little or when they, you know, wrote like funny notes to us on Father's Day and Mother's Day, like that sort of stuff I hold on to. But the reality is, is who are you keeping that stuff for? Number one. And number two, I can, I can rest assured that none of these kids want their math worksheets and that's what they're going to get, you know, in 20, 30 years when, they get those keepsake bins. And so for me, I just feel like limiting that stuff as it comes in is a huge key to staying sort of organized I in agree. your family life. I love it. And and it's perfect because we're our sponsor this month is Denise Albright and she has the class keeper system and she's got that and she she has a an actual product 
that allows you to have those. And it's got like folders and file things in a three ring binder and check, go to our website. You'll see in the, yeah. in the links people for that are listening, but it's, it's great. And I, I do also agree. I think developing the strategy to streamline. And so it's second nature, the, the process of right. that, that incoming stuff, because otherwise it becomes like drinking from a fire hose, you know, exactly. you, the mail, the paper, whatever it is, is going to be boxes, all yes. of that stuff, like clean them out, put them away. It's yeah. just, you know, minimize that part of your yeah. life, like control your controllables. Like that's something that um, I can do. Did yeah. you hear that? Sorry. Nope. You're all good. Um, okay. So we're going now, you just gave some amazing tips, right? Which are great. And that are legit. And I love it because they're what we would call evergreen or generic tips that you can use any time of the year. But if people are listening in real time, we've got Thanksgiving coming up next week, then we're rolling right into Christmas, Hanukkah, all the holidays, which is like crunch time for a lot of people, especially busy moms. Um, talk to us a little bit about some holiday organizing strategies, tips, whether it's things that you're doing, um, or, you know, how do you keep sane during that crazy time of year? Um, well, I also have a birthday in December in my family, which adds a huge element. My my middle was born December 22nd. Okay. That is really (laughs) bad timing. My husband is December 17th and it's Uh, really annoying. It's it's really annoying as a kid, like a little kid, it's hard. And I'm sure when she gets older, she'll be fine. But like, so yes. Yeah. Cause everything gets, does, does she feel like she gets gypped? She does. I try to do like birthday is like need to have and Christmas is our want. So I try to keep it like separately, um, but it's three days different. So it's, it's not easy. Um, yeah. But like my keys to staying organized during the holidays are really like transferable year round. Number one, look at your calendar and pre-plan. Like there's going to be a thousand parties there. You want to do family pictures because you want to have Christmas cards. You Are you traveling? When are you, when don't you have school? like all of those sorts of things, get them on the calendar right away because it allows you to see like how quickly you're filling up and how much time you have to do the things you have to do for the holidays. So, and obviously pre-plan, like you have that, you have the calendar, but like start now. The sooner, like, I feel like I'm talking to myself, but it happens every year. Christmas and Thanksgiving are the same exact time every year. I I was just going to say, I know Hanukkah changes like it varies, but Thanksgiving and Christmas, you know, it's the last Thursday and December 25th. Like, you know that there's no surprises. Right. So there's things you can do to get organized in advance of those things. And so like, I always try to tell myself, like, I know it's, you know, when, when I'm in October, you know, like, I know it's only October, but like, No, it's not you. This is going to creep up on you so fast. So um, what I like to do before I make any sorts of lists of gift giving and things like that is I want to edit. I like look through just like I do it back to school, look through their closets, anything that they don't fit, you know, what doesn't fit them anymore. It's too small, it's too big, get rid of it. Um, And that allows me to quickly just make sort of like things they need list. You know, yeah. like maybe they need more underwear. Not, I'm not just buying underwear because I'm filling, you know, a stocking or a box. Like, do they need underwear? Do they need socks? You know, like what do they need? That's stuff that they're not going to ask for. And those are easy gifts to get, stuff that they need. Um, if you have kids, like go through the toys, spend some time editing that sort of stuff now, because not only do you get rid of the stuff that they don't play with, you can pass them down. You can donate them to children and need, um, but they are making space for all this new stuff. So then it's reducing clutter as well, you know, because a, a lot of people get crippled after Christmas. They don't know where to put anything because they didn't do that sort of edit. So you can start that process now, getting rid of the stuff that they don't fit in or they don't play with. And that same applies for, you know, adults and all that good stuff. And then I like to create a budget. You know, the third thing I would do is just budget it. You know, you know, you have parties, you know, you have hostess gifts and 
Um, you have to bring an appetizer. You have to buy gifts for, you know, everybody in your family and your extended family, like create sort of a budget and then make those lists. Mm -hmm. You know, like for me, I shop for, you know, my three kids and my husband. And then, you know, what about my mom? And what about Tom's family? And then what are we I have doing a whole, for that? I have a whole spreadsheet. It's like yeah. crazy. That's, but, you know, yeah. And then and, I have, I have a bot. I have a bot and then I have, if, cause especially since I do so much online shopping, uh-huh. I have, if it was bought and if it was received that way, oh. I know like, wait, yeah. did I get this? Did I not get this? Because inevitably I'm ordering something that winds up being on a back order, but I don't realize it. So I, it's a little crazy. That's smart. That's smart. I love that. I need your spreadsheet. Yeah. I think it's, all, I actually think we added it in our free resources. Oh, I think, yeah, I think we have like our holiday organized checklist because that was, I, when I was, I started like forgetting like, okay, I, then it was like, I do it. Wait, but where did I have a, you know, a designated kind of like drop zone where my presents go. Yeah. But when the pack, sometimes the packages come in and you don't open them or maybe you can't open them because, uh-huh. you know, for whatever yeah. reason, uh, people yeah. are listening. Um, yeah. But you know, then that way it, it allowed me to keep track of like, okay, I know that this is, you know, I'm still waiting on this um, piece. So I think that's really right. important. Yeah, absolutely. And then um, the last thing I was going to say is yeah. you know, just get like wrapping, a wrapping station, like mm-hmm. get, get all your wrap and nothing is worse. I, I actually take one day. So I, I have a crawl space in my closet and I, nobody wants to go in there. So that's where all the gifts go. Even they're not even curious enough because they're still a little afraid of it. (laughs) And then I set up like a table in my bedroom and I put on love actually, and I wrap all day. Um, but like pre-plan that like wrapping paper and simplify. Oh my gosh. Everybody in my family gets their own wrapping paper. So does mine. Yeah. So, so like you, your pink polka dots, your blue stars, like everybody that's the, there's no bows. There's no gift tags. It's literally like if you're red polka dots, there you go. Lexi, yeah. you're red, you're red yeah. polka dots. Uh, so I like to create a plan um, that way and make sure I have enough and obviously tape and all that good stuff. I do do nice gifts for everybody else. I do ribbons and bows and all that mm-hmm. good stuff, but um, you know, just make sure you're stocked and ready for that. And then my last tip is actually on the back end of the holiday and when you're taking down your decorations and um you know putting things away I always say just do it with intention look at it like was there stuff that you didn't use this year maybe you don't need it anymore and now is the time to edit it properly and put it like only put away what you want to keep and then that way it's so much easier when you take it out you know and for me I decorated in stages like I might put out my stockings and some of my tabletop stuff um, and pillows before I get my tree. So like put it away as you would take it out. So I just, I don't need to take out my ornament bins. Um, So just bins for ornaments, just be super intentional. And it makes it less overwhelming when you do it like that. You know, because you're like, oh, it's not like I have to do the whole thing at once. Mm Mm-hmm. So yeah, so I just try to be, do that, everything with intent, basically, so that when, you know, it comes time for next year, then everything is super organized when I'm, you know, doing the whole process again. Yeah, I I love everything that you said, and and we have a lot of overlap in kind of our approach to doing things. Um, And we used to do when my kids were younger, we, it would be probably like the beginning of December. So it was after Thanksgiving, but before Christmas. And we would inevitably pick a weekend that, and we take like a couple hours and it really, again, it wasn't even a whole day. I would set aside a little bit of time and the kids would go to the play, the, our playroom was in our basement when they were younger. And we would say, we're going to go through and kind of do a sweep for, um, the less fortunate kids. And we're going to the stuff that we're not playing with and using and all that. And it was on the pre-planning, the pre-side of things. Again, like you said, making space for the new, but also allowing the kids to have ownership in terms of saying, okay, we're going to be helping to donate these to other people who can be using that might not be fortunate enough to be able to have a new influx of things. And so, um, letting them do it with purpose, 
you know, and, and some meaning and, and have value. So do your kids get involved in this or you, uh, let me do it in the dark of night. <laughs> they, they do actually, my kids don't really, they don't have a ton of physical, like emotional attachment to stuff. They're really easy to work through, but you know, it's That's like nice. my girls have to try everything on, you know, make sure that, you know, like do that whole process. And then my middle one, she gets all the hand-me-downs for her closet is, you know, busting at the seams. And she's kind of like a fashionista. So she like, will put stuff together that I would never do. And I'm like, oh, that's so cute. Like, I like, I like how you did that. And then my little guy, I mean, he's seven still. So he, yeah. he, you know, I do most of that stuff for him, but yeah, I mean, I empower them to make those choices. My, we, my, older girls they don't play with toys so they're really it's just cooper stuff now and he's pretty you know realistic and level-headed about like i don't play with this stuff anymore and if somebody else can play with it great and so you know that makes that whole process pretty easy for us so i try to get everybody involved yeah and for people listening out there that maybe that may have, maybe you're struggling yourself with emotional clutter. Cause I see that a lot with parents where, you know, their, their own um, relationship with stuff kind of can get in the way or be a roadblock for them working with their kids. And I think the more we as parents can just normalize this, it's like we, you know, our, our stuff doesn't have to define us in these things. You know, there's a place for keepsakes and memorabilia and all of that. But again, the more we can just say like, this is what we do, you know, where it just becomes sort of like the whole, the process of your editing when the kids come home from school, like this is just what we do. We come in, we empty our backpacks and we do this right. or the mail comes in and we sort it and we edit it. This is what we do in terms of prepping for the holidays. Right. And that actual physical item doesn't hold the memory. Mm -hmm. The memories are in your head. So it's, you know, that's what I always like to say and what, you know, your space is worth money to you and time and effort and all of that stuff. And so, you know, of course, keep things that are super special for, I understand that for like for myriad of reasons, you know, I've made mistakes. I've gotten rid of, I've lost, I lost my dad and I had gotten rid of stuff that he like had written me and I wish I wouldn't have done that. So I, I understand having emotional attachments to, to things. Um, but like a toy, you know, it, to me, it's, you know, it was a nice memory. Have a minute with it. Remember when your son or daughter played with it and the sounds drove you crazy. If it means that much to take a picture of it and then let it go to give joy to somebody else, you know, who can, can have that opportunity to experience it with their kids. And um, that I always say would give me more joy than holding on to it where no one's going to play with it or enjoy it. Yeah, no, I, I love that. So tell our listeners before we go to our last break, if people want to learn more about you, want to, if they live in Jersey and, and you travel too. So like, but if people want to like connect up with you, where do they go? What's the best place? All the things. Yeah. So, I mean, the, all the usual suspects, we have a website. So like Lori said, it's orderly home, um, spelled like my name, L E I G H. And so website, social media, so I'm on Instagram and Facebook. You can get all the information there. Our website is really like has all the information. Um, and if you want to hook up with us, if you're interested in booking us for a job, uh, you just send us an email through our contact us page, and then I'll reach out to you to schedule a consultation. And then we're a little bit different on, I, I learned through Lori, and then from a lot of people that I've met uh, from an organizing perspective, we actually pre-plan and shop for products yeah. ahead of yeah. our Can you, you know what, before, I, I actually want to, I actually want to talk about that for a minute. So I want to, I, cause we didn't talk about that. And that actually is a really interesting distinction because, and I'm wondering if you could talk about that because most times I'm always telling people, don't worry about the product. Let's go through the editing first, yeah. but you have a different approach. And I'd actually really love for you to just walk us through that. Sure. So yeah, I do have a different approach, which I thought was like how everybody probably did it when I started and I'm learning that they don't. But basically what I do is when I go for a consultation, I'll walk through people's homes um I because we are we obviously focus on design I am um 
taking inventory of what they have. Mm -hmm. And I know for the most part, you know, people aren't, aren't going to get rid of everything and things in the space will need a vessel and the category of what it is will dictate. Like, for example, I could say like, I'm in a closet. Let's say I'm in Lori's closet and I'm looking at her clothes and she's got um, plastic hangers and wire hangers and some velvet hangers and all of her stacks of clothes are falling over and there's no additional storage on the top. So right away, I'm like, I need new hangers for here. They all need to be the same. I need drawer organizers. I need shelf dividers. I need baskets. I know on average that we're going to fill about 80 to 90% of the space. Knowing my client might say to me, oh my God, I got to get rid of all this stuff. Then I'm like, oh, maybe I don't need all this stuff. But I pre-plan in advance knowing that, you know, on average, we're going to use probably 95% of what I bring. So I, my proposal is encompassing of what it is that the, I feel like the overall feel and design aesthetic should be. And we bring that product on the day of. That allows your life to not be displaced um, for more than one day. Um, I am big on just coming in, doing our work and leaving it perfect. I didn't personally, for me, I don't like things hanging over. I don't wanna wait on product that might be out now on back order. I like to come in and get it all done in one day. And so that's why our process, that's what we've been doing. And it has been working for us. I mean, we are simplifying a little bit and just in general, buying more product to hold on to um, in storage so that we can, you know, act, like have stuff in on last hand. minute. Yep, have stuff on hand. And literally we're not reinventing the wheel here. I mean, there are clients who want certain baskets or have a different aesthetic than, you know, something that I might have on hand. So we can buy that especially, but we're trying to simplify a little bit um, because we tend to use the same products over and over and over again. But yeah, that's just something that, you know, separates us from the rest. I know a lot of people do the empty and edit and then kind of leave it and then do the product part of it, purchase the product and then come back. And I cut out that step. And that means we just don't disrupt those people's lives for more than, you know, more than time than is necessary. In my mind, it works, it works well for us. Yes, we have returns and things yeah. like that, but it's, usually minimal. And I guess, I, I, I guess a, a question that some people, I'm just trying to think of like, if people are listening, like this sounds great. She comes in and does it all in one day and it's like a transformation and I love it. I guess uh, I'm curious in terms of when you're billing people, like when you're billing for a project, you're encompassing like, here's going to be, you know, time, labor materials all in one. Is there a range? Because people might be going, well, she's quoting me for all these products. And then we wound up not using them all. Yeah. Um, I, if somebody are, is, is listening out there and is just curious about that. So as you know, because you've urged me to uh, simplify my process. <laughs> yes, I have. Um, I, I do pre-plan in advance, even if I don't know if the client's going to book me or not. So it, there is more work done on my end uh, up front. Um, so you're obviously only billed for the product that is used. So if you, let's say you gave me a $500 deposit for supplies and I only, we only use 400, then I just take the, I apply the hundred dollars to the labor line. So yes, you're only, you're only billed for the products that you're used. Obviously that, you know, makes yes. a lot of sense. I tend to overbuy though. Um, and then come in on plan. I'm pretty, I pride myself on coming mostly in line on all of my supply line proposals. And that's because I do do a lot of work up front, um, which makes my life harder. But at the end of the day, uh, there's less returns and stuff on the back end. I love it. And it's great. And again, there's so many different ways that people can run their organizing businesses. And uh, depending on the types of clients that you see and the space that you have, you know, again, you got to kind of figure out what works for you. But I love I love the evolution of your business. I love just how the, how you've created this incredible like brand and machine that is just really going, but not losing sight of that relational piece and really understanding your clients. Um, right. It's just been, it's been a joy to watch from the sidelines. And um, I really encourage everybody to check out all of our partners for sure. Um, follow them all on Instagram because they're all great, but yeah, definitely you're going to look at 
Lee's stuff. And again, order Lee, L-E-I-G-H, home. And um, you're going to be like, oh, I need her in my house. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're going to just take uh, our last break now and then come back for our rapid fire hot seat question. So sit tight. All right, Lee. So speaking of products, we've been asking all of our organizers in this particular partner spotlight series, what is your right now? Like what's your favorite organizing product? And it could be like a calendar app or something. It doesn't have to be an actual like tangible product, but like what people out there, like, what is, what is Lee loving these days? Uh, Well, that's such a hard question to answer. I know. Because it really varies by space. <laughs> I um, know, but you're gonna I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna hold your feet to the fire though. And I you- think I would just say maybe the skylight calendar is like my favorite product right now um, that we talked a lot about just making sure that our families are you know organized and stuff like that. Um, so I guess I would have to, if I'm, you're making me pick one, I am, I'm sorry, like imp- impossible. And then I guess, then I could just say, you could do two. If that's, you have another one and then maybe white handle bins, plastic white handle bins. They're like the most universal and then multi-purpose bins. Ah, there's too many, but multi- <laughs> multi-purpose and white bins. <laughs> I um, love it. I love it. You know, they look nice and they hold a lot of stuff and, um, they're durable and last a long time. So yes. um, for a small investment, you can make a big impact in your spaces. So maybe white handled bins and multi-purpose bins. I got also them. I wrote, look, I'm writing them down. Look, they're on yeah. my, they're on my cheat sheet. I wrote them down and I love them too. And again, this is all like free advertising out there for people because yeah. we're not getting paid to say this, but I love it because again, they are versatile. You can use them in multi-purpose. Hello. You can use them in multiple rooms. Um, The white handle ones, I know the ones that you're talking about because I use them all the time and they're great because they're inexpensive too. Like the the acrylic bins, they can add up after a while. Like I, we love them, right? We're fans, um, but they, they can start to get pricey and the white the white plastic ones are, um, they're awesome. I love them. So we will, I also, we'll look up. Oh, yeah. sorry, sorry. I was going to just say like on my website, there's a link uh, under products I love. Um, and the, all of my favorite products are listed there too. Oh, so, cool. you know, I, cause you made me pick one, but I picked three. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, it's okay. The rest of them are on my website. <laughs> yes. And we'll obviously have links to all the things, yep. all things yep. late. So we will yeah. be able to go. Okay. And in this season of your life with three kids, the business, all the things, where do you feel the most organized and where do you feel like a little bit of a hot mess? I just, I, my calendar is is super organized, but, um, the hot mess, sheesh, it's gotta be like just my admin stuff for my business, just in general. Um, I wake up very early. I work out, I work at client houses, then I'm a mom then I wrap up my work day. Then, you know, I make the di- make dinner and do all of that stuff. And then by the end of the day, my desk is full of stuff and I'm failing miserably um, on the management of that. Following up on emails and things like that. Like I know people want to hear back like in within one minute. And um, I, ha- I try to give myself some grace and just say, listen, this is, this is one local small business. And if you don't hear back from me today, hopefully you'll still love me tomorrow. <laughs> um, but it's just, I, you know, it's hard to stay on the every day, as you know, mm-hmm. the everyday tasks of running a business and people say, oh, you can well, hire somebody. Well, you know, a lot of what I do is here in my brain and it's really something that only I can do right now. Um, and I know there's a million people who want to give me tips on how to simplify our process, but um, really for me, it's just, that's the part of my life that is um, probably the hottest mess. Um, well, I appreciate you sharing that, vulner- the being vulnerable and transparent in that. And again, you know, we all have areas where we feel like we are stretched too thin, you know, mm-hmm. and um, if there's ever a point where we can, you know, talk it through, you know, where to find me, but, uh, (laughs) but yes, I also do think that there's something to be said of setting an expectation of 
you know, for anybody listening out there, not just for Lee, but for anybody out there to say, if you're a small business owner, even if you know that you're like not going to get, even having an autoresponder saying, thank you for your email, you know, we're probably on site with a client. We'll be get back to you. We try to get back to our clients within 24 to 48 hours. Do you know what I mean? Or something for anybody out there, like we, you don't have to, just because we live in this world of texting and DMing and people just expect begin to expect this immediate response doesn't yeah. mean that we have to do that. And yeah. I think it's important, especially as small business owners to set the tone that no, like I don't respond to emails after a certain time, or I'm not doing this on a weekend or whatever that is, because right. people will pick up on our lead. And I think just to having that open dialogue of communication and not putting added stress on yourself that you have to be on call 24 seven. So right, right. That's not just for you. That's for it's, everybody listening out. It's there. easier said than done. Like something I we know. didn't talk about was just like the emotional connections that we grow to have with these clients. They love you, and they they are so appreciative of what you do for them. And you become friends with these people. Like you, they let you into their homes and with their stuff, and it's very personal. And you know, then they you become friendly and then they are texting you <laughs> yeah. weekend and at night. Um, but you know, part of that, I do love that, um, that, that piece of it. I have so many friendships now that, you know, you know, clients of mine and, um, and it's really super special, but like you said, it's kind of hard with the boundary situation because you're yeah. available. Everybody knows you have a phone and you're available 24 seven. Right. Right. Yeah. That's true. It's yeah. true. Well, Lee, thank you so much for coming on our show. Thank you for the gift that you're giving out to all of your clients and for being an inspiration. If this is your first time tuning into our show, welcome. Um, make sure to click the subscribe button. We've got a ton, a ton of content on our YouTube channel and past episodes on our website. I know I referenced, we have some free resources um, on our website at Simply Be Organized, but we're here each and every week to give you tips, inspiration, guidance, um, whether you're an entrepreneur looking to start and grow a business or you're looking for organizing tips, we are here to help you. So until next week, I'm Lori Palau, peace out. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, please spread the love and share it with your friends. And if this is your first time joining us, make sure to click the subscribe button wherever you are listening so you never miss an episode. And while you're there, please leave us a review so other people know that our show is worth the listen. You can also find us on YouTube and Instagram at This Organized Life Podcast. And if you'd like to connect with us, you can head on over to our website at simply the letter B like boy organized.com, which is filled with tons of resources, including free downloads, checklists, links to our amazing organizing partners and all of our digital offerings. I'll see you next week for another episode of This Organized Life.